In this video, I'm going to talk about a potential problem that can arise when you use inheritance hierarchies, and specifically when you use objects in an array of those um, objects. So let me describe the inheritance hierarchy that I have here. Uh, I have a my device superclass with three subclasses: a my robot, my computer, my phone. A my device holds all the basic information about a device: its price, how much memory it has, whether it's in stock. A couple constructors, a ship item method. Uh, that determines some shipping information and a two-string method. So pretty straightforward. Uh, each of the subclasses are pretty similar. Uh, my robot has a unique instance variable for whether or not it's Bluetooth connected, a couple constructors and a two-string. My computer, a uh, couple constructors and a two-string, no unique instance variables. And finally, uh, my phone, uh, one unique instance variable, two constructors and a two-string. So it's pretty straightforward. So in the driver, what I do, is I, ha I make one of each of those, a computer, phone, or robot, and I put them into a shopping cart for my online store that can hold my devices. So since each of these is a my device, the array of my devices can hold all three of them, as you can see here. And I go through a for each loop, and I print out two string and the ship item method for each object. So pretty straightforward. I'm just cycling through uh, an array. So I'm going to run the program. And when I do, you'll see that I get a printout for the computer, phone, and robot. So no problem. So here's where the potential problem arises. Let's say I want to make another uh, object or item that I want to sell in my store called the My Book. Um, and I want to add it to it. And before I do that, before I try to run this thing, let me take a look what a My Book is. A My Book is. Uh, represents a, a paperback book, not an electronic book. Um, so I have title, author, price, and is in stock. So I don't have anything for the memory here. So technically, I could say extends my device so that it becomes a my device and can fit into the array and it would compile. But that might not be the best thing to do. So here's a reason why. What I just did is I tried to make a my book a, a subclass of my device. And in the green here, I've denoted a couple common instance variables I, that I could factor out into the super class. I have two here that are unique for the my book, just like a my robot has uh, is Bluetooth connected and a phone has a carrier. So those are unique to my book, no problem. But what you'll see here is if I do create this inheritance structure here with this and make my book a subclass of my device, I'm going to force the my book to have a memory variable when it really doesn't. So it would work, but it's not the cleanest thing to do. Um, so I'll have this extra memory variable hanging around, and this is just one. So if I continue to do this, you can see this become, can become quite a mess for these, these uh, subclasses. So it's not the best thing to do organizationally. So instead what we do is we look for something else that's common. And what else is common is this ship item method. I can see ship item is in a my device, and it's also here. So what we do is, instead of creating a subclass of my device, I do the... I do this. I create a an interface, which is basically an abstract class with abstract methods. So just the method headers. And you can see here, the commonality is now in the methods, not the instance variables. So I don't want to create any unnatural relationships between things. I'm going to keep these three to my device, but use the ship item as the common denominator. And then I can use this as a type of as for my array. So let's take a look at how we do this. So the ship item is the key. That's the method that is going to have us create a link between everything here. So I'll take my book over here. And what I'll say, well, let me first create this interface. So I want to say edit new class, and I'll call it shippable. Shippable. Get rid of everything here. Public, and I call it an interface. So step one is to create the interface. And basically, it's just the name of the method that is in common. So it's public. It's going to be abstract. And it's uh, void, I believe. And it was ship item. That's it. Just one line of code. And if I had other methods, I would add them in here as well. But for my example, I have one method that's common. So that's, what, that's all it is, shippable. Then in my device, I say my device implements 
shippable. So step two is to go to every class that uses that method, and which this does right here, and I say you can implement shippable. So it's not ex it's not extends like a superclass, it's implements. So I do it there. Uh, oh, it's a string. String is a return value. Let me go back over here. This is string. You have to be exactly uh, accurate here. So string, that should work now. Yep. And then my book, it, we're not going to do extend. We're not going to do the subclass thing. We're going to say implements shippable, which it does right here. It has the ship item method, which returns a string. And then in the device driver, what I'll do now is I'll say, you know what? I'm not going to hold my devices. I'm going to hold things that are shippable. In other words, things that I know I can call the ship item method on. And one more right there. So basically, I'm using it as a type. This is array can hold any item or anything that ha that is shippable. In other words, has the ship item method. And here I can see that they all do. They have that ship item method. So now if I compile and run it right here, you can see now that I have I have uh, my computer, my my phone, my robot, and I've also included my uh, book, my non-electronic book, that has all of its data there. So again, what I did was I found commonalities in methods, the ship item and the ship item in the my book and my device, and I factored that into the shippable uh, interface. One last thing. You might recall that these three subclasses don't have the ship item in it. They're, they're factored up in here. So when Java tries to call the method. It actually tries from the bottom up. It says, oh, you try to call ship item on my computer. I looked here, but I don't see it. Therefore, I must be using that one. Again, I start at the bottom. My phone, ship item. I don't see the method here, so I look at the class above it. And there it is. I want to call it from my robot. I don't see it, so I go to the class above it. There it is. I try to call it on my book, and I see it right there. So I call it right there because there's nowhere else to go from there. So that's the... Uh, rule for calling methods, you start at the bottom level class and you look for it until you see it. It's kind of like passing the buck. Uh, so there's our solution to storing different types of items in an array or array list, uh, and it's by creating an interface that factors out common methods.